What's up guys, Hedon and Hanner, UFC Twitter takeover. The reason why Hedon's Gracie University t-shirt is profusely wet from sweat, and I'm wearing the dopest Gracie Jiu-Jitsu rash guard of all time, <laughs> is because we just sparred for 30 minutes, you guys. We could not agree on the top triangle choke of all time. And we still can't agree. So we decided to include them both. <sighs> Tell them your favorite one. Hoist Gracie, triangles Dan Severin. Anderson Silva, triangles Chael Sonnen at UFC 117. You guys, 25 minutes on the bottom of the fight, surviving. And he pulls off one of the most incredible triangle arm bars of all time. We're about to break it down. <laughs> Situations were very shocking, man. Let's talk about hoists first. It happened so long ago. Was it was the amazing. first triangle? I was there. I was there at UFC four. I was eleven years old. It was magnificent. It was the first triangle in UFC history. So that's part of Hito's reasoning why it had to be the the it one. It was the, the first one. time, and it, not only that, but once again, it's hoist who the world thought was in trouble. Yeah. Underneath, winning from the bottom. Yeah. You can't beat that. And what's crazy is that if under today's rules, right, hoist would have lost that fight. Because it would have been three rounds, rounds let's say, or four, you know, three rounds of five minutes. He was in the bottom for 15 minutes. The fight would have ended, and he would have lost the fight because he was on the bottom of the guard the whole time. Dan shot a nice double leg, ended up in Hoist's guard, and uh, was just basically smothering him the whole time like this. Dan would put his chin like in Hoist's eye socket sometimes, like a lot of elbow in the face, like just trying to put pressure. Because as a wrestler, he didn't really know how to pass the guard. He didn't have any understanding. It was just a matter of smashing and trying to pin his shoulders on the ground. And they were in the fence corner. And what the best part about Hoist's fight with Dan Severn was what? The triangle? The commentary. The cut, like every fight, when the <laughs> like, like the breakdown with Frank Mir and Noguera. Yes. The commentary says that Frank Mir is in big trouble, and then all of a sudden he wins. Yeah, exactly. They were a hundred percent convinced that Hoist was losing the fight. It's a very bad situation. Dan is dominating the fight. Dan is dominating, dominating. Dom Hoist did a great job of protecting punches right here, and then eventually Dan is throwing punches. And Hoist's knee slips in front of Dan's arm. The most basic but effective triangle setup method of all time. It's your favorite one. The most basic. It can be the most effective. It, yeah, isn't and that great? The most basic is the most effective. And of course, Dan had no idea what this meant. No, he just like, Wait, Dan's I, like, yeah, why can't I punch you? I need to free my arm real quick. And, and then Hoist brings the foot through. And then Dan said, yes, Crosses. now I can punch from here. And he can do his stuff. Which is very similar to, you'll see in a moment, to Chael's behavior, this idea of attacking yes. when the leg is thrown over the neck. Hoist then. Now, uh, ho traditionally here, people pull the arm across to lock this even tighter right here. Now, the one risk of doing that is what? When you pull it across, go. That's when they might posture up. Now, I don't think Dan would have postured up. Nope. But Hoist nonetheless decided to keep Dan's arm in the trap over here. Well, Hoist didn't need to pull it across. That's true. He just slapped his leg over the top right there, locked his own shin. And at this point, what's going through Dan Uncle Dan's mind? Still, I said Uncle bit, Dan since he's known since I was 11 years old, but he's you know, still a little bit unaware of what's happening. Dan is still trying to be heavy and go forward, and then all of a sudden, that the, the blood flow just yeah. is being cut, and it's being cut, and then Dan taps like this. But Dan doesn't just tap like a normal tap. Dan, the most legendary tap of all time. Dan taps, the people in the nosebleeds saw the tap. This is far from Brazilian tap. His tap deserves no Gracie breakdown. Correct. It was like a slap, <laughs> like, a, like a humpback whale slapping the water. <laughs> So yeah, Dan tapped out. I had no idea what happened. The commentators had no idea. Hoist is losing! Hoist is losing! Hoist is losing! Oh man, Dan tapped out! Fight's over! Hoist UFC 4 champion! It was amazing, you guys. It really was amazing. Hoist became the three-time UFC tournament champion at the end of that fight. And um, yeah, the only ever three-time UFC tournament champion, because they don't do the tournaments anymore. So uh, he'll hold that title for forever and ever and ever. But uh, a ridiculous match nonetheless, just one that I think for a lot of, when I meet people today, the number one thing when people say, hey, yeah, I, your Uncle Hoist, UFC, I used to watch it way back in the day, I saw the UFC, man, man, that fight, where you fought that guy, the guy, the guy, and I already know who the guy is. Of course. Dan the Beast Severin. The, the mismatch in size, Dan was like 260, 270, just a freaking beast of a man. Hoist is 175, 170, 180. And uh, that's another reason why. Yeah, it's true. That's another reason why he outweighed him by so much. It's true. 
Chill and Anderson, same size. It's true, it's true, it's true. Ridiculous. They wear the same shorts. Let's they talk about clothes. Chill. So Chill double legs Anderson for 19, 19 and a half minutes straight. Takes him down, dominates, controls the fight, and is literally controlling Anderson on the ground for, for, for you know, 20 minutes, approximately 20 minutes. Unfortunately for Chael, championship fights are 25 minutes. So he ends up in Anderson's guard at the end of all so this. So the same thing. Chael would have won if it wasn't a championship fight. Yes. <laughs> Chael would have won if it was three rounds. Yes. But woulda, shoulda, coulda, if the crow could sing, it would be in a golden cage. Correct. As our dad always says. Correct. So. From here, stage one, he did, what was so impressive for Anderson was how well he blocked punches throughout the whole fight. His distance management and his ability to be on the bottom of the guard and not take punishment. Like it was 25 minutes, 20 minutes in the bottom of the fight, but he wasn't all pummeled and beat up. Anderson stood up at the end of the fight and his face looked like he just walked into the cage and he was totally fine. He doesn't take beating, it's amazing. And I think it stems not from the fact, also from the fact that Anderson's a black belt and has great jujitsu defense, but more so from the fact that Anderson himself is a, damage inflicting master. So he knows how to inflict damage and he knows more importantly where you can hit from. And the same way Anderson can stand against the fence and just bob and weave and neutralize all your strikes, he can be here against the, against the bottom of the, the mat and be able to defend. And he's such a good job of just like neutralizing the whole time, having great, just knowing where the hand should be, knowing how to use his legs to block all these punches. It was remarkable. And we saw it again in Chael versus Anderson too, when Chael mounted on Anderson and he just, Great punch protection. That's right. It's amazing. And the truth is, you can't do that much damage if the person has some kind of knowledge. Yes. The most damage happens to this person when you know nothing. And you just try to get up Correct. and get face punched in. But as long as your hands are up a little bit, using your legs a little bit, you're going to really take out some of my power. So several times throughout the fight, Anderson tried to jump to a triangle. But posture, uh, Chael would posture, and Chael would boom. But at the very end, he was getting tired, and finally he had Chael's head. This is the secret detail, because if you're going to shoot a leg over the neck, you have to make sure that this person cannot jump away with the leg, right? So you have to keep the head in the party. And then Anderson had Chael's wrist. He literally stuffs the wrist, just a quick stuff, retracts and crosses his legs right over. Now at this point, Anderson's hand, I mean, Chael's hand kind of got stuck in the middle right here. And at this point, it's not good for me, because he can either come back in if he wants to kill the triangle, but instead, what did Chael do? Chael pulled the hand back. Yes. Boom, to strike. Which was the best possible thing Anderson could have wished for. Best thing. Controlled right away. He went to lock it tighter, but Anderson could not get a full lock. And Chael's a big guy, big neck, big shoulders, and was kind of spread elbow here. So he just locked it up partially like this. It wasn't a full lockup. We call this a partial lockup. We call this a full lockup. If it's a full lockup, the game is over. The fight's over. But partial lockup, Chael had some blood flow. He was okay. So right away, Chael started standing up and went for the emergency escape. He sat down, he threw his leg over, freeze. And he started tucking his chin, push the leg off your head. Like this. He wanted to slip out. Go ahead. He wanted to slip out of the triangle. Chin tuck, push, and escape. And you can tell he's practiced that one before. And it's a reasonable escape. It's a great escape. Very good. Especially from triangle partial lockup. But from a full lockup, it's hard to slip out because it's such a congested area. But in a partial lockup, he stood up. He started stepping over, slipped his chin out. But right here, slip your chin, freeze. Look at that. Here's the catch, my friends. The more tucked your chin is, the more aligned your elbow is on the pelvis. The more in the triangle your chin is, the more safe your elbow is. But here you're very chokeable because you're in the triangle. So when Chael tucked his chin to get out, he put his elbow on the pelvis. Yeah, he has to narrow himself you have to, be, yes. to slip out through the space. Yeah, because the space is this big. Get out. There's only one way. Only the narrow way. If my elbow stays wide, I'm too wide. I will not you, fit. But your elbow is safe at this point. Correct. But it's the same thing that Fedor fell for. He tried to slip out against Fabrice Verdun. The elbow winds up on the pelvis. And then what's even more magnificent is that Anderson recognized that. And he stopped going for the triangle. He grabbed the wrist. He drove. Uh -uh, he didn't, I don't think it was that deliberate of a tap. Exactly. Like, Chell used the Brazilian tap. Okay, One of the most clever, innovative taps of all time. And uh, the first time we saw it was with Ken Shamrock in UFC 1. But Chael brought it back, and he brought it back very amazingly. So much so that he tapped. Anderson let go, respected the tap. Chael turned the corner, got up, and almost wanted to pass his guard and keep well, that's going. What, that's how we know it's Brazilian. Yeah, it's true. He's trying to keep fighting after he did it. Yeah, that's how we know it's Brazilian. And isn't it ironic, the two most famous Brazilian taps of all time were done by Americans 
on Brazilians. So it isn't really a Brazilian thing. It's something that just started in Brazil. Because jiu-jitsu was there so long ago right. and all the chokes and armlocks were happening there, so the Brazilians got credit for this amazing tap. You guys, it was amazing. And I guess there's a loophole in this argument. We didn't need to spar for 30 minutes to, to, to uh, deliberate on which one was the best triangle because technically, Hoist's was a triangle, Anderson's was a triangle arm bar. Correct. It's a different submission. But he would have tapped the So there's essentially six Gracie breakdowns in one day, not five, six favorite submissions. These two just happened to be merged into one video. He would have tapped. Anderson would have caught the triangle. If Chell would have bent the arm and not tucked the chin, Anderson would have got the full lockdown. If the crow could sing, it would be in a golden cage. Correct, but this one would have really yeah, happened. I can't believe he sparred for 30 minutes for no reason. Hmm. Here's the deal. For the final Gracie giveaway today, we had to do something big, okay? We had to go all the way. We want to give you guys a lifetime GracieUniversity.com membership. Like what? Lifetime? Forever? Like till they die? <laughs> We've never done this before. No. But if we're ever going to do it, today's the day. Gracie <laughs> Breakdown <laughs> Marathon. You guys stuck with us throughout the entire day. You learned techniques. You connected. You were respected. You acknowledged these ridiculous submissions of these professional warriors and athletes. And we want to give something very special. Lifetime Gracie University membership. But the membership itself is useless unless you have somewhere to train. Correct. Or unless you actually take the steps and start training. Or you go find a certified training center, which we have over 100 around the entire world. Go to GracieUniversity.com, find a school near you. But there isn't always one near you. Correct. Some guys live in the farm in Idaho, you know, picking up barrels of hay. Although there's Those more. guys need somewhere to train. They can put some hay down and they can get it cracking or we can give them some home grappling mats, Gracie Academy official folding grappling mats. Portable, put them down, 10 by 10, dedicate one room, make it your little Gracie garage dojo situation right there, and get down through Gracie University with a couple of dedicated training partners. To think that there's someone out there right now that's not doing any jiu-jitsu at all. That's not, that's not, that's not real. There's no, it's possible. There are not people who are watching us right now who do not practice jiu-jitsu. 100%, 90% of them don't do jiu-jitsu on a regular basis. Let me but now, to one of those people really? can actually Embark on the journey all the way all the way all the way and you learn the techniques through Gracie University but You train at home you develop the reflex and then guess what you come to the Gracie Academy You come to a certified training center and we test you and if your reflexes are where they need to be Blue belt now as our uncle Hoy says the blue belt only covers two inches of your butt You've got to cover the rest put in the time develop the reflexes and see that it doesn't change your life for the better in every way In every way they don't have to train forever they can yes. just train for like a month or two, and then they decide yeah. if it's worth their time or not. You guys, here's how it works. You're going to hashtag Hoist Triangle or Anderson Triangle. Either one. Whichever one you thought was more memorable for you. Hoist Triangle or Anderson Triangle. Hashtag it. Tweet the link of this video, and we're going to be able to identify where your tweets are. And let us know which city you live in around the world and where you need this Gracie University subscription to help plant the jiu-jitsu seed in your corner of the world, okay? Tell us where you live, why you wanna get down, hashtag it, make sure you tweet the video, link as well, and you can leave a comment in this video in YouTube here and let us know where you live, we'd love to hear. If you already train, tell us where you train. If you don't already train, tell us what city you're in and, uh, and why you need that Gracie University subscription. The mats, the Gracie University for life, and I'll even give you this rash guard. This exact one. This exact super sweaty one that I sweated in for 30 minutes. And you won't even wash it. You guys, much respect. Most importantly, let's enjoy the fights and let's see them next weekend. Where are we going to be? Las Vegas. Mandalay Bay Convention Center is going down. UFC 175. Leoto Machida is fighting Chris Weidman for the title. Ronda Rousey is fighting Alexis, Alexis Davis, Davis for her title, to defend her title. Hedon's going to be cornering Ronda. I'll be cornering Leoto. We're there, we're representing 100%, and for those who care and for those who train or for those who want to embark on that journey, if you're going to be in Vegas, we're giving four seminars, super seminar weekend at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center as part of the UFC Fan Expo. If you've trained before, get there. If you've never trained before, you do not want to miss this. This will change your life. Satisfaction guaranteed, both of us teaching four seminars in two days. Certificate of completion for the graduates who do the four, days, or do the four seminars in two days. 
basically, it's going to be the best martial arts, jujitsu filled, UFC filled weekend of their entire lives. Do you Correct. Agree? The expo itself is ridiculous. ridiculous. Meet the fighters. Plus talk, the jujitsu. Plus you can buy a ticket to the fight and watch the fight live. And if you can't get into the fights, this is the hardest ticket of the year. Guess what? Go to the club nearby. Go to the bar. Watch the fights. Embrace the energy. Embrace the energy. And know that with your super seminar techniques that you learned that morning, if anybody gets out of hand, you can take care of business. You guys, much respect. We've had, hopefully, you guys have had as much fun as we had on this Gracie Breakdown Marathon. And uh, hopefully the UFC will invite us back for another Twitter takeover somewhere in the distant future. And uh, until then, keep it real, keep it playful, but most importantly, train jujitsu. It'll save your life or someone else's. Much respect. Our grandfather's vision was to share the gift of Gracie Jiu Jitsu with people all over the world. Thanks to global internet accessibility and the development of a revolutionary interactive online learning system, his dream came true and his legacy will live on forever. Gracie University, let us teach you everything he taught us. Putting on cold right here. <laughs> Mine is warm. Keep it on loop warm. Okay. It's pretty freaking real sweat to me. Let's do this.